All right, so it was really kind of them to put us as a anchor talk. Obviously, you know, we appreciate all the other speakers opening up for us and uh, just kidding. Um, so before I get started, I just want to say I'm not a web designer or a graphics designer, as you can probably already tell. Um, so I just wanted to talk about um, a, an application, a web UI that I wrote um, and that Tanner helped me to focus on. Um, and basically, I have a web developer background, so um, I got into security a little later. And this is basically my first time just uh, messing around with uh, Security Onion. So I, I um, built this as a way to make it easier for people to get into, uh, into using it and also for like home users so they could get started securing their networks. Um, but before we get into that, um, how many people are familiar with the Pyramid of Pain? David Bianco's Pyramid of Pain? All right. Well, the other, the people who didn't raise their hand won't get this, but where's the clicker? Aww. So we, we have the Pyramid of Pain. Like you've never seen it before. <laughs> Exactly. So that's one of the things where we haven't quite figured out how we're going to fit that into Chive, but you know we feel like it's significant somewhere. We just have to find a place. All right. So what is Chive? So the objectives of Chive, and I'll, I'm going to try to do a demo later. So we'll see how that works out. But um, and if you don't like the name. It was Tanner's idea. <laughs> so obviously trying to riff on onions. Um, so the main thing is, uh, well, these are the objectives. We're, we'll get into them a little, uh, a little bit more. Um, so visibility, hands-on experience, uh, focus on home security, integrating existing tools, and high-level to low-level workflow are the objectives. Oops. Whoops. I got it. All right, so, so visibility, what we really wanted to focus on was uh, uh, the uh, usefulness of, of having visibility into a network. And so just uh, the customers that, I, that we work with, we, uh, we stress this. And, and it's one of the, the m most challenging uh, parts of, uh, of, of Getting into a, getting a good hold of your environment, and especially if you're talking, you know, you've got 50, 500, 5,000, 50,000 hosts, endpoints, visibility is incre increasingly difficult. Uh, so we, fo we focus on home networks. So uh, you can just because some people never get that entire visibility of an organization, home network, small sample set, uh, you can act, know what it feels like to actually get visibility in entirety and uh, and and kind of drill down from there. So uh, we want to, you know, just get the, the landscape of what's connected to our network. You know, whether it's, you know, the simplest scenario is we've got a workstation and a router. You know, maybe you have five iOS devices on top of that. Maybe you have a smart home and you have some, uh, uh, as Nathan calls them, smart things uh, connected to your uh, to your home network. So uh, really, just getting a, uh, starting with a profile of what we have and uh, and what it's talking to. I I also want to say um, I've also worked with a lot of I worked with a certain product. Uh, at Mandiant where we needed customer IP space and it never failed um, that we would ask them for it, they'd give us some of it and we had a sort of mashup of like IP to location and a who is uh, database and we would be able to search for their IP space and so they would give us some and we would send them a bigger list back and say are these yours too? And they'd be like oh yeah, they are. <laughs> so that's one of the ways that I've seen uh, the lack of visibility in customers that we've worked with. And also I wanted to say um, Jason Smith, uh, part of this was because of an idea that he put in my head um, with, uh, if any of you have used Flowplotter, um, I wanted to get that. That was initially what I wanted to do, like make a graph. If you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, um, uh, I think I have a screenshot later, but. Got it. Whoops. Okay. 
We're double clicking. Um, part of this was also hands-on experience for me because uh, part of this I wrote a Python sniffer and so actually like getting into data packets and dissecting them and figuring out how to parse them and um, use the information that was available. Uh, so that's part of the hands-on experience, but also hands-on experience for a user who's new to security or even somebody who has been doing security for a long time, I think uh, this can be helpful. Um, so also, so the reason why we focused on home security was because that's a network that you own. And it's relatively small, so you know, as I was building this, I didn't have to worry about 5,000 endpoints. Um, it's also minimal repercussions, so I was, you know, if I take down the network, my wife's mad at me, but <laughs> that's about it. Um, and also, uh, being able to, um, are just now with how many smart things there are around your house, um, I, I don't know if anybody's ever bought anything that has, that's internet enabled and didn't know it, but um, I, I haven't because we have, I'm 10 years behind the technology curve, so. I don't really have to worry about it too much, but I imagine it could be a, a problem for some people. All right, and then of course, uh, we want to do uh, focus on integrating with the existing tools. So uh, uh, in the spirit of Security Onion, we want to do uh, uh, stay away from reinventing the wheel, use what's already there, use the uh, events, alerts, and contextual data already being produced and captured by tools on Security Onion, and then add uh, uh, minimal uh, additional tools to, uh, to the platform. So uh, uh, we're, we're focusing on Elsa and Squeal, and then uh, we've added uh, Silk and, and Flowbat to, uh, to the equation. So. Uh, uh, minimize the, uh, the uh, deviation from normal. And that really, we wanna, you know, <coughs> given that this focus to, for beginners or people trying to get into network visibility, uh, you know, focus on, on analyzing and, and investigating and learning and not playing sysadmin and trying to build an a NSM box. And then the, the high level to low level workflow. We wanted to focus on uh, getting that, that landscape, getting that 10,000 foot view of, of what we're looking at uh, and then giving uh, uh, contextual data relevant to each endpoint and giving the ability to drill down into more uh, and you know, kind of get down into the weeds when you want to. Uh, so starting with uh, what's on the network, uh, what's it talking to, looking at any squeal alerts that exist for that particular endpoint and then uh, drilling more down into what activity have we seen on the host, how often have we seen it, uh, is it something that's new or occurring all the time, and ideally being able to baseline and, uh, and look for deviations. And, and part of that too with the high to low level is that I've noticed that doing security and being able to find out more information about what's actually going on in your computer is kind of addicting. So. Part of the, uh, the flow that I like to see is starting out with this UI, but then being able to pivot to different tools and then even go further and, uh, in order to go deeper. So right now, Tanner mentioned Elsa and Squeal and Flowbat, but um, Wireshark and any of those other tools. Uh, I was basically limited by um, other, uh, other tools by whether they had an API or not. So uh, in the future, that's something we would like to look into more, how to connect these things. Um, and so this is the contrived meaning of Chive. So obviously you have to try to fit something in there. You pick the word first, right? And then you make it fit. I think that's how it works. It was either that or shallot, and shallot was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Challenging. Yeah. So collection and host investigation via Ethernet. So the, ba the basic part of it is um, the UI. 
Um, but there's also the sniffer that I mentioned, which basically goes through and only listens, well, it listens for everything, but it only gets information from Ethernet uh, packets at the moment. And once it gets that information, it takes the MAC addresses and uh, queries an API to get the vendor, and then uses that to gather information about each host. And so, and like I said before, there's a, an, a basic ability to pivot between tools. So let's, uh, let me see if I can get this, as, since the next slide says demo. But like I said, I'm 10 years behind, so my VM's running on a different laptop. So give me one second to switch these. I think Tanner's gonna tell jokes while I... This is just like a whole thing with the, the laptop. I, at one point I wiped it and put Linux on it and then I put Windows back on and now Wi-Fi doesn't work for some reason and I just haven't felt like figuring out why. Future security update sensor. <laughs> exactly. I thought this was already running, but... Um, Instead of doing this, well, there, there you go. all right. Yeah. That was quick. All right. That's actually my password. It's just dot, 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 dot. So this, that wasn't a very secure thing to do. Um, I thought this was already running, like I said, so I apologize for this. I'm using Oracle VM. And no, I'm not. Oh, battery's dead, okay. Virtual box. Just because it's free. So, let's see. All right, so this, um, I'll talk about some of the other things that I've implemented in here before I show it. So it's also, besides a sniffer, um, it just has a MySQL backend. And uh, I've built in a couple things using um, subprocess for, uh, in Python. So once I get my Mac address and the vendor, then I also have the ability to uh, with the click of a button, run Nmap and get more information. So get ports uh, for those hosts. And, um, and then you can just check right in the UI. <laughs> Surprise, I'm gonna play a game for you guys. <laughs> um, so, so once you uh, once you run nmap, it tries to get the host name and it and it grabs the ports, um, which isn't always possible. But um, two other things that I I wanted to focus on information of things things. So I ordered uh, a couple cheap um, internet enabled like a power socket and a uh, LED controller because we just. We did our kitchen, and my father-in-law thought that under counter lights would uh, that um, LED strips would make good under counter lights, and uh, so my wife disagreed. But I think it's going to be great for like Christmas because you can get green and red flashing, and it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool. What we thought it was pretty interesting to, to focus on the IoT devices because they. You know, most of them perform a, a specific function and and they're somewhat repetitive so they exist and they they make certain connections and you know to make a generalization they're gonna repeatedly perform that function and make those same connections so they give a, a, a good scenario to, to get a good baseline of a device and what it's doing on a regular basis and then uh, as we you know further develop the tool uh, look 
look to baseline the tool and then or baseline uh, communication and then uh, build something in that uh, that looks for outliers or any kind of deviation from that that normal in and out communication. All right, we're really close to a demo. <laughs> I actually did this on purpose because I didn't think I could fill the whole 45 minutes. <laughs> All right, so I had these ideas of maybe bringing my own router in and having everybody connect to it, and that was just too much. So usually uh, you'll see, hopefully, uh, that there is, I, I like tabs, so there's an active tab that shows all the hosts that are currently talking on your network, and we're not going to see that because there aren't any, um, but there's also a historical tab so that when, there we go, so that when you, um, you can just see everything that's ever been on your network, which at some point, like I, I haven't said this yet, but this needs a lot of work unless you really love Bootstrap. Um, anyway, here we go. All right, that's nice and big. All right, so these are all the hosts that have connected to my network in the past three months, two months that I've been working on this. Um, so this is basically it. I mean, this is, I tried to keep it as simple as possible these are all of your hosts. Uh, if you want to know more about the host, for instance, if you want to see what ports are open, you can go and uh, click on that button on the, on the left there. Um, if you wanted to do an end map, which I can't do because I don't have any hosts, you would click get host name. Or if you just want to edit a host because you, it, the end map didn't return a host name, you can do that here too. Um, but once, when I'm talking about pivoting, so if you, I'll go to that, um, let me see if I can find it. This, that was the, this is the host, uh, it's an internet enabled, or Wi-Fi enabled um, electrical outlet. So I thought this was interesting. So if you click on the hyperlinked name. I don't even know why this doesn't, I, I don't know why this runs so slow out when I'm not connected and don't have everything mirrored. Oh, that's what I should tell you too, how I mirrored all my traffic. Um, but anyway, this is really slow. So the, the other thing is how do you get all your network traffic to the security on your box? So at first I played around with Raspberry Pi, and I think that that could work. Um, but I ended up, I have an Asus router, and it's running Linux. So it was really easy to just go in there and do um, two IP tables commands, and just route every single piece of traffic to uh, this laptop. And so that's worked really well. There we go. All right, so this is the next screen. There are basically only two screens. Um, and when we're talking about high level to low level, so the, the host is, is a pretty high level, and then the ports gets down a little further, and then you can get down to uh, traffic that is related to these hosts. So the first one is squeal alerts, which this, this one doesn't have any squeal alerts. Um, but the next thing is ELSA records. So I'm just taking, I'm just uh, using the command line um, ELSA commands to get a count of what is actually in existence for this host. So this host has Brocon, and if you click on that, it will take you to ELSA. If I remember my password. Never. This is what happens when you work at Manny. You just get used to 
typing in passwords every five seconds. <laughs> All right, so I'm, the way that I'm connecting back to this, and I'll have to talk to Martin to see if there is probably a better way, but I'm just doing a uh, UR, uh, URL, just specifying the query in the URL. And eventually this will return results. We'll go check on it in a minute. Um, so the other thing that I, I added, I, I've been playing around with Flowbat and Silk and Flowdata, and so I thought that would be really cool for, for this as well. And one of the things that I'd like to do eventually too is to um, be able to establish baselines for each host and then be able to detect outliers and uh, anomalies using that. There we go. It showed up. So for me, this is helpful because it's already giving me the query and giving me all the information that pertains to that host that I'd be interested in. And uh, let's see, for flow data, so this shows you everything um, that that host is connected to. And then so that we can actually do something with this, once you click on that, it gives you the same kind of count as you get uh, under the ELSA tab. And then it, if you want to view this in ELSA, you just click on that and I'll have to see if Martin has a way that I can just make a new tab in the ELSA tab already, but. And so the, the, from the beginner aspect, it gives you a, kind of a jump start into if I wanted to look into this device and use ELSA rather than bringing it up and figuring out initial syntax, it, it kind of just gives you a starting point with syntax, and you know, from my perspective, it's easier to uh, take any take a, a starter query and then modify it rather than uh, uh, writing from scratch with if I'm not uh, extremely familiar with the tool. So I think we we've got that for uh, for Elsa and then uh, uh, flow that to some extent. Right, and then um, if this ever responds. Uh, then I'll show you uh, what I've done for Squeal, which is basically the same thing. I'm just specifying as much information as possible so that you get, uh, only get information in ELSA that's related to that alert. So basically for a Squeal alert, I'm passing the source IP, dest IP, uh, source port and dest port, and then you get all that information right there. So um, one of the ideas, I don't know, I'll have to talk to Chris um, if there's an API for Flowbat or if that's something that they have thought about. Uh, wh what I was going to do was just give them a query that they could paste into, the, into Flowbat, but. I should have redacted all of these names. Now you guys know way too much. Plus you have port 445, Configure. Yeah, I know, I installed that myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is my wife's computer. <laughs> All right, well, let's go back to Elsa while we're waiting. There we go. This was interesting, too. So this is the, um, this is that Wi-Fi enabled electrical outlet that I was talking about. And it's calling out to China, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> For the first device we tried to look at, uh, we got some, uh, some country code CM traffic. Could, could be less interesting. It's just phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there aren't any school alerts there. Oh, well. So anyway, I, it, it called out to China for three hours. So I'm, unfortunately, I missed it. So that might be something else I need to build in here is uh, how to make sure that I get like an alert or something if I'm seeing traffic so that I can either that or kick off Wireshark automatically or I don't know, some other security onion awesomeness. 
Uh, right. I think that. <laughs> that would work. All right, where's my other computer? All right. Back to back to the slideshow. All right, we'll skip all these. This was in case the demo didn't work. Uh, that's not in case the demo didn't work. <laughs> Windows. Well, let's try this. Maybe it's working. It is working. There we go. Uh, we have to start over. <laughs> there we go. Oops. <laughs> this is my first time I've ever done this. This PowerPoint thing. Computers are hard. <laughs> they are. I should have focused more on. Uh, this is my favorite one. Is that why it is? There we go. All right. So, so these are just some of the thing, ideas that I have in mind for now. Um, I really, really, really welcome feedback. So anything that anybody, if anybody has any ideas or anything, uh, please let me know. So one of the things that bothers me as, as far as simplification goes and as far as keeping it um, so that a noob can use it is the sniffer managers, uh, basically the fact that you have to run the sniffer. So I kind of just want to throw that into the UI and let them push a button start the sniffer. Um, and also, uh, I think janky was used earlier today. The pivoting is a little janky. It's not too bad um, for Elsa, but I want to be able to pivot to everything. So uh, I'm going to be looking into that. Um, I also want to build as, as many tools uh, for context as possible. So who is GOIP, reverse uh, lookup, things like that. And then I just mentioned I want to integrate it with more security onion stuff. And then baselining was mentioned. And I mentioned this earlier, figure out how to capitalize on the pyramid of pain. So. I think that's it for us. Are there any questions? Have you thought about integrating with an IDS? Um, like, you see it trying to first talk to China, then talk to other devices, uninstall, but just, well, IPS, I suppose, even just switching off access from that port, whatever it is, to the rest of the subnet? I haven't thought about that yet, but now, now I have. Now I will. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Anybody else?